If you walk inside the Vaughn Volunteer Fire Department station, you'll notice there's usually more trucks than people in it. That's because they have a staff shortage and they need more EMS and volunteers. Volunteer fire departments are essential to the communities they serve. Vaughn's department needs more volunteers, but also more EMT and emergency staff. They are hosting an open house to introduce an EMS course they will be hosting this summer. The course is taught in collaboration with the fire department as well. Assistant Fire Chief Ken Hanks says the department has 26 volunteers now and would love to double that, but says the lack of volunteers prevents them from expanding. He added that they have gotten interest in the course and are excited to put it on and teach people about the job. We've actually picked up a couple of uh, volunteers through the EMT course, which is great. You know, it's an awesome learning experience. The EMTs get to play uh, with the firefighters as we do um, scenarios with car crashes and extrication. And it's, it's a huge benefit. You can't put a price tag on it. EMTs are uh, a great asset out here and um, we need more. We can uh, serve our uh, community much better. Classes are not easy to fill as of late, according to Courtney White, a course instructor. She said the last class had 12 students, and that is a big class for her. She hopes to not only expand class sizes, but the number of classes in the state as well. From the medical side of things, it is very dire. Um, Montana, we are running, we have a very big shortage of EMS personnel right now. It's just getting people into class that want to do it and get them out into the field and they can just start seeing what we do. I don't care about the pay, I don't care about the hours. It's all about just connecting with people for me. I've been in the EMS family since I was born. My grandma was an EMT, my mom was an EMT, and for me to continue that on is just, it's the greatest thing I could ever do. The 13-week course will be held starting June 2nd at 6 p.m. in Vaughn, Asherlined, MTN News. Well, for years, vaping has been viewed as a safer alternative to smoking cigarettes, but that's not exactly the case. MTN's Cade Mentor spoke with experts to learn what harmful effects vaping has on teenagers. According to the Montana Department of Public Health and Human Services, 28% of middle school students report having tried e-cigarettes, while 16% currently use them. Those numbers were from 2019, and experts say they've only increased since then. This is a very um, concerning uh, issue. It is a vaping, youth vaping epidemic. Um, you know, we've seen our uh, number of youth increase uh, dramatically. Um, you know, we hear a lot of issues with vaping in the schools and in getting into the younger grades. Um, so right now we're trying to reach out to even fifth and sixth graders to get ahead of this. It is a huge issue. It is probably the number one uh, substance that that youth are concerned about. Despite the increasing amount of middle schoolers reported to use e-cigarettes, there's been a decrease in the amount of high schoolers engaging in vaping from 30% to 26% between 2019 and 2021. Concern levels, however, are still high. That's still a huge percentage of our youth that are using e-cigarettes. It's one in four high school students that are currently using these products. It's still the most commonly used tobacco product amongst our youth. Montana high school students use e-cigarettes at a rate five times more than Montana adults. And as more younger kids in middle school are being exposed, both peer and media influence play a major role. But one area in particular that drives addiction are the amount of flavors that total over 15,000. We have heard directly from Montana teens that the reason they use these e-cigarettes is because they're curious about all the different flavors and they want to try those flavors out. Organizations are engaging in ways to address the issue to local communities, and they say education is the first step, and for parents, warning your kids ahead of time. In Great Falls, Cade Mentor, MTN News. Judge Kathy Seeley sided with prosecutors, ruling that Lloyd Barris's defense didn't meet the burden of showing he didn't understand the criminality of his actions in connection with the death of Deputy Mason Moore. The effect? Barris will likely be sentenced to prison and not the state hospital. In January, Seeley held a two-day hearing to take expert testimony on Barris's mental state. State law says a person can be found guilty but mentally ill if they have a condition that means they were unable to, quote, appreciate the criminality of their actions or conform their behavior to the law. The prosecution and defense experts agreed Barris suffered from delusional disorder, but split over how much it affected his actions. In 2017, Barris and his son Marshall refused to pull over when Moore attempted a traffic stop near Three Forks. 
Prosecutors believe Marshall Barris shot more, then the men returned to his vehicle and Marshall fired more than a dozen more times. The two led officers on another chase for nearly 150 miles. Marshall Barris was then killed in a shootout with officers east of Missoula. The defense's expert argued Barris was suffering an acute episode of extreme paranoia that left him unable to conform to the law. But the state's expert suggested his actions were driven by wanting to avoid capture and keep his son out of jail. Seeley agreed, saying his reactions indicated he knew he had committed a crime. She pointed to other cases where judges ruled people with mental illnesses could be sentenced to prison if they knew their actions were wrong. Seeley has not yet set an updated time for Barris' sentencing hearing. In Helena, Jonathan Amberian, MTN News. Well, it was a warm day today. High temperatures in the 50s and the 60s in a lot of locations. And over in Jordan, we actually topped out at 70 degrees during the day today. So that's how you can tell we are starting to get into spring now. And temperatures right now, not too bad. Mid to upper 30s and low to mid 40s in a lot of locations. So cool, but not terrible. And we did have gusty to strong winds around throughout the day. Peak wind gusts over 40 miles per hour in a lot of locations. And it is still breezy to windy right now. Sustained wind speeds currently between 10 and 30 miles per hour. Taking a look at your dog walking forecast for tomorrow. Our featured dog is Big Mac and Big Mac's owner is Katie. If you are going to be walking your dog tomorrow, once again, you are going to have to deal with some wind, but it will be weaker than it was during the day today. Really outside of that wind, we are going to have pretty nice weather with partly cloudy skies and high temperatures topping out in the 40s. Now have a look at your seven day forecast in just a few minutes. Well, a rise in housing demand has city leaders and developers looking at options for more production. MTN's Lindsay Stenger attended a summit this morning where they looked at the issue from all sides. Great Falls is growing. Key finding number one, there's definitely demand for new housing. I think you all know that. 3.7% in the last decade to be exact. And more people equals more housing. Or so we hope. How much demand is there? We see demand over the next 10 years for about 4,500 New units, about 450 a year. The Great Falls Development Authority hosts a seminar to find out what's next for housing in Great Falls. Within the next five years, four large housing developments will be underway in hopes to fill that gap. Clearly, there's a lot of very interested groups out here, developers, investors, and employers, uh, as well as like city and, and other organizations that want to make stuff happen. Two of the complexes will be tentatively finished by the end of 2022, while the other two will break ground and begin development. Um, so you can see the uh, multifamily side there. We have underground parking and each unit with a private balcony. However, Great Falls is still continuing to grow with expansions from Benefice, the Great Falls Clinic, ADF and Calumet, and the addition of the Turo College Medical School, collectively bringing almost 700 new permanent jobs to Great Falls. With the help of developers, this housing data and the city of Great Falls, the Development Authority is hoping to help the growth of the city, one housing unit at a time. In Great Falls, Lindsay Stinger, MTN News. The Federal Reserve is expected to raise interest rates this week in an effort to control surging inflation rates. It's the focus of a two-day meeting that started today. The last rate hike was in 2018, and now economists say to expect a quarter-point increase. Of course, this all comes as inflation reaches a 40-year high, something that's impacting nearly every sector, especially small and local businesses. MTN's Hannah Hislop visited some Missoula businesses to see just how much. Missoula small businesses like here at Great Harvest are the flavor of the community, but inflation is stressing their bottom line. At Missoula's Great Harvest Bread Co., it starts with a grain of wheat. And through the heat of this massive oven, it becomes a loaf. But nowadays, raising dough means raising prices. Charlie Shield, Great Harvest Bread Co. owner, says his wheat prices are up. Our wheat prices just went up 10%. Um, and, you know, over the past year, all our prices have gone up pretty substantially. They aren't the only ones feeling the effect of inflation. <laughs> Hannah Evans, wholesale manager at Bernice's Bakery, says some of the wholesale companies they purchase from have been raising prices for months now. The company that we get them from has actually increased three times over the past six months. 
Bernice's Bakery hasn't raised their prices on baked goods in over two years, but in order to not crunch on numbers, they are in the process of adjusting prices. Um, and we are in the process of starting to do that again because of all of these increases on us. Great Harvest raised their prices about 15% last fall to meet demands, equating to a 10 to 20 cent increase on baked goods. And Bernice says they are looking at a 25 to 50 cent increase. Both stores say they don't want to raise prices, but they are left with no other choice. Now things are continuing to get more expensive, and so I'm hoping not to have to raise prices again. Um, but you know, there's only so much of that that we can eat as a business. Both businesses tell me that inflation is not the only stressor right now. Worker and supply shortages are still going to be a problem. In Missoula, Hannah Hislop, MTN News. I'm Jordan Johnson. Coming up during a county commission meeting, three men were awarded life-saving awards by the county. Download your free KRTV News app and take MTN News with you. And as news leader, you're watching the MTN 10 o'clock news. Two public works employees and one Helena citizen were recognized today during the Lewis and Clark County Commission meeting for saving a man's life. MTN's Jordan Johnson has details. Three men were awarded life-saving awards for their efforts of saving an ice fisherman's life as he fell through the ice on Hauser Lake. On February 23rd at 10 a.m., Public Works employees Travis Leslie and Joachim Walters drove along the causeway when they saw an ice fishing tent go underwater. Leslie and Walters had help from citizen Jason Walden to rescue the ice fishermen. Lewis and Clark County Sheriff Leo Dutton awarded the men during Tuesday's Lewis and Clark County Commission meeting with recognition from Public Works Roads and Bridge Superintendent Kevin Horn. The only words I have, true acts of heroism. I mean, these guys are true heroes. We were in the right place at the right time. Sheriff Dutton presented the awards to Walters and Walden as Leslie was unable to attend. You did well. Few people can go through life and say that day, that hour, that minute, I made a difference. Jason Walden was about to leave as he finished fishing, but when he saw the man needed help, he stepped in and to be awarded the life-saving award made him emotional. Yeah, it's, it's pretty amazing. I mean, um, I don't know, <laughs> just a little overwhelmed, really, uh, to be recognized by uh, the county, um, especially the sheriff. You know, they, they do this all the time. Uh, they're they're lifesavers, and it's just, uh, <laughs> it just means a lot. And with praises from the county commissioners. What you've done, uh, there, there is a family and families who have their loved one today because of your actions. Thank you very, very much. The men walked away as heroes. In Helena, Jordan Johnson, MTN News. We have had windy conditions over the past couple of days, but what is the wind looking like as we go through the rest of this week? I'll let you know my full forecast after the break. Download your free KRTV News app and take MTN News with you. We ended today with some sunshine, but throughout most of the day, we did have mostly cloudy skies and we did top out at 57 degrees today. So another warm day with a low temperature of 43 degrees this morning, both of which are well above average for this time of year. Temperatures right now are in the 40s and the upper 30s in most locations, so it's cool, but really not too bad outside and sustained wind speeds right now are weaker than they were during the day today, but we still are dealing with some gusty winds as sustained wind speeds are currently between 15 and 30 miles per hour in a lot of locations. As we go through the rest of tonight, we are going to continue to have gusty winds around with sustained wind speeds generally between 10 and 30 miles per hour. Wind gusts up to 40 miles per hour are going to be possible at times. During the day tomorrow, it is going to be breezy throughout the day with the strongest wind occurring during the late morning, the afternoon and the early evening hours. Wind gusts up to 40 miles per hour are going to be possible throughout the day with sustained wind speeds between 10 and 25 miles per hour. As we go through tomorrow evening, that wind will diminish and then tomorrow night there will be a bit of a breeze around, but the wind really won't be a huge issue. And then for your St. Patrick's Day, the wind is also not going to be a huge issue as there's just going to be a bit of a breeze around throughout the day with sustained wind speeds generally between 5 and 20 
miles per hour. We did have a few scattered rain and snow showers around. We also had a few isolated thunderstorms around today as well. And this is all courtesy of an storm system that is working its way through the western U.S. And there is a lot of precipitation throughout the western U.S. associated with this storm system. The bulk of it has remained along and west of the continental divide, though, and that's going to continue to be the case as we go through the rest of tonight and tomorrow. A few showers possible east of the continental divide, but a lot of it is going to continue to remain along and west of it. Heading through tonight, we are going to have partly cloudy to mostly clear skies. There will be a few rain and snow showers around tonight along and just east of the Continental Divide as well as in South Central Montana. And later on tonight, we could see a few rain and snow showers along the eastern half of the High Line from Hill County over towards Valley County. Going through your day tomorrow, we are going to have a mix of sun and clouds throughout the day. A lot of locations are going to remain dry, but there will be a few widely scattered rain and snow showers around tomorrow, especially during the afternoon and evening. We will dry out as we head into tomorrow night and we will have mostly clear skies tomorrow night and then very nice weather as we head into your St. Patrick's Day on Thursday. Lots of sunshine around really for a majority of the day, but there will be some clouds around late Thursday afternoon and Thursday evening. Tonight, low temperatures in the 30s in a lot of locations, so another cool night. And then for your day tomorrow, it will be cooler than it was today, but really not too bad. High temperatures in the 40s and the lower 50s in most locations. And again, the wind will be weaker tomorrow than it was during the day today. Heading into St. Patrick's Day, nearly perfect weather. Just a bit of a breeze around. High temperatures on either side of 50 degrees and plenty of sunshine. Partly cloudy, breezy, and high temperatures in the 50s on Friday. Saturday, another warm day with high temperatures right around that 60 degree mark. We will have partly to mostly cloudy skies and it will continue to be breezy. Another storm system works its way through our area on Sunday, which is also the first day of spring. We have a chance to see a few rain and snow showers and it will be a bit cooler with highs back into the 40s, but then heading into early next week. Once again, high temperatures are going to be topping out in the 50s. Still to come after a third place finish at state, find out how basketball drives the Erickson family of Seiko. That's after the break. The well, this year's North Country Mavericks girls basketball uh, team was driven in part by the Erickson family of Seiko. MTN's Dylan Foreman tells us how the present is bright, but the future is even brighter. The North Country Lady Mavericks had another stellar year at the Class C State Basketball Tournament, placing third, beating Twin Bridges in their final game. For head coach Amber Erickson, the final game signaled the conclusion of coaching both her daughters, Tegan and Jane.